Well, joining me now to talk more about what's happening at the G20 Summit is John Quelch. He's the Dean of the University of Miami's Business School. Welcome back to the show. Good evening, Rochelle. So as we reported, countries are balancing their domestic agendas with the common interests of the G20 as a whole. What do we know about the momentum of the key discussions or announcements that are expected? Well, let's start with uh, the G20's uh, objectives. The, the G20 exists uh, not just to be a simple talking shop, uh, but it really exists to promote economic growth. But it has a very clear posture regarding what that growth should look like, uh, that it should be uh, strong, that it should be inclusive, uh, that it should be sustainable, and that it should be balanced. And these four uh, characteristics of growth are the way in which the dialogue proceeds among the G20 nations. Remember that before the G20 meeting tomorrow, there are many subcommittees, subgroup meetings, ministerial meetings. All of these people are doing the, uh, the groundwork, laying the foundation, which the public never really is exposed to, that leads to progress in terms of global consensus building around some of the issues that the previous uh, report mentioned. And as you mentioned, against the backdrop of the overall goals of, uh, of the G20, you also have its main themes. And this year, those are globe, the global economy, trade and investment, innovation, environment and energy, employment, women's empowerment, development and health. Now, some economies do have more influence than others just by the nature of their size. So what are their top three concerns? Well, I think it varies from uh, economy to economy for sure. Obviously, the trade concerns are a break on global economic growth, and that is a concern that spills over across all of the G20. But if you look at the advanced communique, what you can see are several interesting things. First of all, there is talk of universal health care coverage for developing countries. Uh, secondly, there is talk about the digital economy, the global digital economy, and the impact that that's having on uh, tax regimes because of the uh, cross-border purchasing of goods and services that that facilitates without sales taxes being applied. Thirdly, there's an interesting section in the communique regarding cryptocurrencies and the need to be vigilant regarding money laundering using cryptocurrencies. So in the draft communique, there is a wide coverage of many issues um, of this nature. Interestingly, in the draft communique, the environmental issue, which is very critical to many of these G20 nations, is actually not covered that heavily. And I think that's because we're going to see that particular um, element of the communique uh, worked on as a result of the last two days worth of meetings. And, and John, uh, remember, I, remember I, I, if I, I, I may, don't want to get to this issue, yeah. sorry, because I don't want us to, to run out of time. Obviously, sure. some countries, some smaller economies, sometimes their issues might get pushed to the side, given the nature of some of the more, the more pressing global issues. Obviously, South Africa representing the entire African continent at these meetings as well. Do their needs tend to get overshadowed by some of these larger economies with some of these bigger problems? You know, I think, I think in the public media reporting, it's certainly the case that the Trump-Xi uh, meeting or the xi Abe meeting will gain the bulk of the coverage. Uh, but behind the scenes, in the working groups and the ministerial meetings, a lot of the issues that South Africa, Turkey, Indonesia are interested in, uh, such as I've mentioned, universal health care coverage, uh, environmental development, inclusive economic growth, uh, these are all considered uh, quite uh, heavily, and uh, I think that uh, smaller countries in the G20 do get to have a say, the quality of the representatives that they send to the G20 meetings is very important in elevating or not elevating their position. So they tend to put their very best people uh, into uh, these working groups and the back, the back corridor meetings. 
And just very quickly, we have about 45 seconds. You mentioned some of these sideline conversations. What sort of tangible outcomes tend to come out of the G20 and these sideline discussions? Well, first of all, it's very important for the leaders uh, to establish that personal rapport with each other. I think with President Trump's uh, style, there's almost a premium now on person-to-person -person relationships, uh, perhaps uh, less emphasis on uh, what the ministers can agree on behind the scenes. Uh, so the personal relationships are very important. Uh, President Trump is meeting with nine of the G20 leaders, uh, and uh, uh, President Xi also meeting with many of the leaders as well. President Xi being invited by the Japanese for a state visit, very important. This is the first time Japan has hosted the G20. Very important for uh, Abe to show how good a job Japan can do and to be a consensus builder among the G20 nations. John Crouch, thank you so much. Dean of the University of Miami's Business School.